backflip. Now, don't let the line of hearing stuff get you too hung up. You can stack 12 calls on a communicator on a screen. You'll only see two of them or eight of them on here, but you can stack 12. We also kind of do our hold functionality a little different. The hold key on our button is to put somebody on hold. If you get a phone call and you want to go to the next line, just hit it. We toggle, we put them on hold automatically, and you toggle back, back and forth. So you don't have to remember who's doing this. If you ever been on a call where they go, Bob, no, it's Jeff, Bob, no, it's Jeff, and they come back five times because they don't know who's on what line, you don't have to worry about it. It's pretty simple. Um, so on that we do. Um, we also have a single line appearance phone, three line appearance phones, and some six line appearance phones as well. We have a big boy there, the 655. That's a, a touch screen phone. Again, it'll have extension mics if you want. You can put your logo on the color phones. So for lobby phones and that kind of stuff, very cool, very interesting to do. One thing I want to mention in regards to the phone um, is that you do have to have a specific phone though if you are looking for the gigabit to the next stuff though. Yep. Not all of them do the, um, not all of them do the gigabit speaking. Yeah. So these phones come in a gig. And then we have some other phones, that's a gig, and then we have some other phones in the 500 uh, series and the 200 series phones that are gig. This is a wireless phone. This is decked. This is not 802.11. -11. So decked is the frequency that it's doing. And this works just like it. it's a three-line appearance phone. So if I want to call you, I just dial it, and call. And if I want to put this on my pocket, I can do that. I can hook a headset into it, do what I want. Jam loves hers. I've got transfer conference. Again, it's a three line appearance phone right here with a color screen. It's a great little phone. But you do have to use our deck capability on that. That's kind of the variety of phones that we have. Is there a specific kind of phone you were looking for, or a specific question or functionality I didn't touch base on that you want? Okay. Um, ongoing maintenance is generally done two ways. Enterprise or partner, you're going to do partner most likely because these guys are awesome. And the basic difference is who takes the first call. And in partner support, they take the first call. And then we're part of their escalation if they get to a point where they need our help, and it happens occasionally. And he's he's a dog on the bone. He's something else sometimes. But he will stay after us, but they will get us engaged and they'll escalate. They'll own the call and be on it. They'll make sure we help you with it. With your maintenance, whether it's partner or enterprise, you get your upgrades. So not just the dot three, four, five, six, but the 9, 10, 11, 12. You get those at no charge. We get those with the deploying those. Deploying those? You have to pay to deploy That's between you and your business partner. For an upgrade. For an upgrade, okay. Um, let me go into what Carpel does for a. Uh, for our partner, um, partner support. Um, what we offer as part of your um, your partner support is we offer any remote um, remote assistance as part of that. That includes up upgrades. So if you want to do software upgrades, we will do that remotely. We will download the upgrade, apply it to the new time that's best for you, and uh, take care of that as well. It covers the cost of replacing that appliance. Um, and you can go one of two ways. You can go with a partner support that covers the actual telephones, or what we typically like to recommend is you do not cover the telephones because, like Jeff says, 13 months you get those covered, okay? If something's going to break, it's going to break from that first 13 months. And the cost of covering that, um, all your phones as part of your partner support versus replacing one here or there as they break, it's really, I don't think. So we don't support the drop test, so if you knock stuff off your desk, it's kind of on you. Oh, that's the first test I always do. The uh, only time we would charge an extra fee, the only time we ever charge an extra fee as part of the partner score is when we actually had to roll a drop. You know, so if we had to come out to your site in order to you know, do some extensive title shooting or, um, you know, but that's not very common at all with this system. Well, one thing I find with phones, it seems like almost every month I go with, the thing that goes wrong is the most suspicious. You guys have, I mean, that's not in 13 months. It's the what? The switch? The, 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 switch hook, hook. the hook switch or the uh, handset. Right, mm -hmm. yep. yep. That gets dusty. Uh, and in all the time I've been doing this, I've Never rarely seen one of those go bad. The only time I've, rare, I've ever, honestly, ever seen one go bad 
is for a customer that likes to, you know, slam the phone the 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 Have not experienced that issue. Uh, we, we had some of these phones in auto body shops that have survived that kind of thing. And the interesting thing, because the communicator and people like it, we've got a 75% adoption rate of our tool. Our coverage are about 30%. You think people aren't picking up the kids? They're not. I can show you dusty phones like you would believe. Because if you're in an office, you have it set to automatically answer through the speaker phone. If you're in a cube bill, you may have a headset. So all you do is answer it on there, and you, you're not touching the phone. Not you can work with you on the technical solution too, but um, like we, for example, that we uh, but you're not use it all of us. Playing drums. Yeah, one of them. And we put an amplified headset jack on every one, so we have on every phone. So we eliminate. Oh yay! One of our competitors still sells brand new phones, and you bring in a required brand new phone, and we don't. Even if it's a real old headset, a lot of times the worst thing we'll have to do is run a little transmitter wire with a laser screen right here. So if you should so charge a wireless headset. Um, no, that can be for a wired headset if it's really old. Why do you need a wired You don't need a lift. We just need that transmitter to be able to go on and hook off the phone because it's, it's so the vintage of it is so old. Um, we can do Bluetooth, but it has to be Bluetooth based. We don't do Bluetooth native on our phones. But you can do you can buy like a Bluetooth headset and plug it in, and you can walk around and do the the on hook off hook however far that range is on. Yeah, yeah. And we deliberately did that because Bluetooth has a mind of its own. We had a Bluetooth phone, and you might go upstairs and register to the wrong phone. So, Jeff, I've got a question. Kristen didn't ask me questions, but she has. A, I've got another client that's a travel agency that has two locations, but her business has three offices in Indianapolis and Kansas City, is that right? So if she's looking for her uh, main headquarters here, one of the other locations already has a, a phone system, don't they? I believe it's short yeah, in Kansas City. Okay. But it's a small office, it's a personal. That's fine. So, so could the, the phone numbers come from one location they go out where you can use, um, they can dial from Indianapolis or Kansas City just like they're getting a regular call from Sunrise Tours where your clients don't see it, but all the numbers come into a central spot, which is essentially saving your organization money by having a central location. Yeah, you could do that. You could do the virtual switch and just put phones out in Indianapolis. Calls you can do that without central You can. Central you can be more efficient depending on where you are, but you can. Yeah. Now, at times you might sound like Max Headroom and sound very, you know, mechanical, but yeah, you, you can. SIP's going to be the best, but SIP isn't everywhere. People think it is. The other thing about SIP is you got to really look at the carrier and you got to look at the testing and stuff they've done because SIP is an RFC. It's not an IEEE standard. At so everybody SIP's a little bit different than the next person. It has to be certified on individual systems. Yeah. Not great. Yeah, so a Ford Blue on a car is not the same as Chevy. It's a little bit off, right? You know, we'll okay, we've got some truck in a couple of weeks. Great team team. Yeah, let's go. We're ready. <laughs> We're ready. So, yeah, we can definitely do that. And in the case of you guys, uh, another thing we can do is we can talk about what we do with these cross routing. So, if you've got a short tail in Indianapolis and here, and you want to call a customer in Indianapolis, not your office. First of all, we're going to be smart that if you try to call your office and you dial it 10 digits, the short tail system is going to go up, and it's got four digit dial it set across the internet and saving that cost. The other thing it's going to do is if you dial nine and dial the number of you know, Pizza Hut in Indianapolis because you want to order lunch for a meeting you've got tomorrow when you get there, it's going to go no. It's going to send it across as a seven digit call, and it's actually going to connect the call off the local gateway in Indianapolis, so it's a local phone call for you and you're not getting right behind the six service. And then that caller ID would show up as you from St. Louis? No, it would show up as you from St. Louis. So, you know, <laughs> How partners, you answer that? partners are like our kids, right? They're all the same. I mean, I love them all the same. All the same. But, but they have different functions. I'm not going to have my daughter help me dig a trench in my backyard, but I will my son. He could bake a cake and save his soul. Plus, 
you still get eight K the pornography and stuff. But at the end of the day, different partners do different things. Um, there are different levels based on volume and amount of certifications. Um, but it's really based on the needs and functionalities of what you have. Um, these guys can handle a new level of customer. We're calling on the University of Missouri, which is tens of thousands of users, and we've got systems that are 20 to 50. And so these guys can call on and do whatever you want. They've got great partnerships, they have great folks like this. So, yes, we do have different partners that do different things. That's something you have to decide as a customer what's going to fit you and be best for you. But at the end of the day, I'd tell you these guys can be first. I'll put them up against the So if someone calls me, I can't say, well, what level of partnership are you? Sure, you can. So there are levels. There are levels. There's gold, okay. silver, and there's a platinum. I don't know what that means. There's gold, silver, and authorized. And these guys are authorized, I believe, right? Yep. Close to silver. Yep. And that's mostly between authorized and silver. It's just dollar amounts. And, and I've got partners, and the partners that will call you and I'll tell you they're gold and silver here. They've been doing it four years, or no, three, three, three years. Three years. Three years, and I've got other partners here that do it, have done it seven to nine years. They don't only may do a couple hundred thousand dollars. We're, we're, we're gonna get we've done. been doing it we've been doing it three years, but myself and another gentleman that I have working for me, um, we came from a company that was a short tail dealer prior to us being with Park Belt, and we had done it three years with them as well. So I mean, yeah, there's there's quite a bit of experience at, at our our company and um, been doing it for quite a while. They may give it an advantage price advantage to other partners can't think of how we do business. We're very loyal to our partners. Um, you can change partners, but when you do, we make you sign a partner change of record. You have to tell us why and what the reason is. And we give them a two week grace period to try to get you to fix it. Because well, for my customer, try to change partners. Uh, as if, you know, if you want to change, I wouldn't want to Right, but sometimes that happens, right? Yeah, you know, some customers do things different, they're a little fickle, things are different. But we make it a little challenging for you because our customer sat is so high and we leave the industry in that because we don't have a lot of turnover from partner to partner. Oh, and like, for example, I had, uh, sorry, I had, I had a, a customer call me this morning from Cape Girardeau. They're left without a partner right now because that partner um, decided they weren't going to go ahead and sell short. And we had to certify the partners in our standards. So they called, they called me up and I'm going to work with them. I, I issued them the change of partner request form that Jeff is referring to. And once they sign off on that, then we become the partner of record and we, we are authorized them to sell. It isn't like they can go since, you know, if we're the partner of record, you can't go to another short sale partner and they, can, they can't sell you. Short tail, you've got to be sold um, short tail by your partner. So, okay. so this is a small audience. We've done uh, these lunch and learns before, and we sell, as I told you on the phone, we sell native services as well. Almost every time we have one of these lunch and learns, we have a client, hopefully Sunrise George, maybe yourselves, that uh, not only uses this for native services, but they also come on with uh, as well. We've got seven, eight, nine clients that do both managed services and short tail print. Yes. Yeah. And in managed services, you're talking about all network devices? Uh, yes. Varying levels, probably, right? right. I, I told you we we're a Cisco partner, but we. Um, uh, yeah. So, like the other company you said you're using, we do varying degrees of managed services. We provide managed services for sometimes tours. And there's some where we just manage their servers. There's some that we just manage their PCs. Um, there's different, uh, you know, uh, break fix. You know, some of them might already buy their own equipment and we do just simply to install. We want to do what we call a proactive approach where we're doing the management on a monthly basis, but it's up to the client. Okay, so now we're on the conference, right? We're talking. It turns the server off. We're going strictly through here. So this is PSD failed. So even on that server, it's not running, I'm still able to make a call, to go on a call, and conference about those things as well. So, so what are the things that you can't do? I can't, well, in this configuration, I can't get to voicemail, I can't get to my ACB groups, I can't do any reporting, I can't do things that have changes. If I buy what's called a B-switch, I can do voicemail resonant here, and I can do auto-attentive, auto excuse me, auto-attentive resonant here on a B-switch. 
So I can take a couple of those functions and push them out to this argument client if I want to. But the basic functionality of make a call, take a call, transfer a conference is going to be here no matter what. So it'll fill over the thing. So I just wanted you to show that that's not smoke of ears, that actually works. This is an example. Like I said, we're ahead of this, but we're not writing this video. It's still And it has a built in auto attendant. It won't say you reach the St. Louis uh, chapter of the United Way, but it will say you reach the short tail system. If you know your extension, please dial it now or um, hit zero for the operator. So that'll be built in even if the client, even if the server's down. We don't have that built in. So we'll have some minimal functionality. So I'm good. Anything else? Yeah. Any other questions? Anything else? Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.